start to was uh, came before us who were donating uh, to make our lives better, and also we may donate to make whoever else were making their lives better, whether that's at Calvert Hall or in any of the charities that are options. Amen. Thank God, Baptiste, us out. Pray for us. Hold on. I could donate to the magazine drive and don't tell them where I want to put my money. I don't think so. Oh, I thought you said other charities. There is other charities. It's like it's oh, but you're saying besides the magazine drive. No, you can donate like through yeah. through the magazine drive. You can donate to charities and like half the goes to charities, half the and like half the things go to the hospital, the rest go to the charity. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right, so yesterday the feedback was 9.3 in learning, 9.4 in engagement. People were confused on total revenue, okay, um, which we kind of just did here. If something is inelastic, if price goes up, quantity demanded is going to go down a little, and total revenue is price times quantity. So an inelastic price and total revenue have a direct relationship. An elastic it's an inverse relationship. Okay. Is elasticity the same the entire curve? No. no. So if it's a straight line, Jack, and how does it go? Do you remember? Yeah, it'd be elastic at the top, you elastic in the middle, then it's elastic at the bottom. Okay. Great. Um perfect. Could someone tell me the difference between perfect elastic? Thomas. Uh, perfect elastic is horizontal, people will only buy it at one price, and then perfect to be inelastic is a vertical line, people are gonna buy the same route no matter how much it costs. Okay, great. How do we calculate what's on top? Sorry, what do you need? Is elastic inverse to the Elastic is in inverse with over All right, quantity demanded, percentage change in quantity demanded or percentage change. And, and then someone said, I need to give you bigger spaces on that. I'll work on that. I'm bad at space management. All right. Um, tonight, I will review at 745. It says outline for, um, what does it say? Outline for chapter um, four. Um, and I'll review tomorrow at 745 in this room. Okay. And yes. Oh, where can you find the reports for somebody? Because uh, I'll send it. I'll send it. Do you, are you on remind? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll send it on remind. Okay. Um, and then you should start. Well, then we have the quiz tomorrow. It's only on chapter four. Okay. So it's going to be supply, demand, lower demand, lower supply, shifters, that type of stuff. Okay. So that'll be there. All right. And then. Friday. And Friday, um, your chapter five note to do at the bottom is the outline for chapter five. Okay, so don't use the book, use it on the outline on the topics page. Now, again, um, if you don't know something in your homework, We'll clarify it. Like, I don't want to, I'd like you to try to figure it out. I'd like you to try to struggle and figure it out. But if not, come in and we'll talk about it. Okay. So, so that's, that's Friday. And please just print them out. Okay. If you don't have a printer, find a printer in school. Now, someone asked me, I'll study for um, the quiz. So there's three things I think I would do. The first thing is, there's the outline that I'll go over today or tomorrow. Could I cover it up and see could I do it on my own? If I couldn't, I just kind of try to study the things I couldn't remember. I would then take the practice quiz and then I'd watch. Yeah, you know, I'd come to the review and then I'd watch the breakdown of the practice quiz I had. Now, that's if you're not, you don't feel you're doing well. If you feel you're doing well, just do what you're do what you're doing. Okay. All right, any questions on the quiz? 12 questions, 14 minutes. Friday, I think we'll have some fun. I think.
I got to just work a little. Did we do supply yesterday? Did we look at this? We didn't? Okay. All right. All right. Quick question then. Here we go. I'll give you a minute. What is perfectly elastic mean? Huh? What does perfectly elastic mean? It's it's totally horizontal. Um, the price doesn't change on the quantity. Are you you're gone? Okay. I'm videoing it. I uh, I'll write you. Thank you. Hope you feel better. I I get sick if I look at that. A as an alpha. B as in broccoli. C as in Caroline. D as in dogwood. E as in L. So we got. C, demand is perfectly inelastic, the supply. Okay. Who's got C? Go, talk to me. Why C? Because there's only one of them and it's so valuable that people buy it anyway. All right. So there's one of them. Will people buy them at different prices? No. Okay. Let's just tell me. Say there was one pen in the world, how much might you pay for it? Okay. Do you think there's a chance you might pay more? Does the demand could be perfectly inelastic? Demand is going to change, right? Now, what is going to be perfectly inelastic? Yeah, because there's only one painting, or he's dead, so he won't have any more painting. So the supply is perfectly inelastic. So if you're going to look at like the graph of Michelangelo's paintings, it might be demand like this. Now, who knows? If income doubles in the world, the demand for his paintings might increase because people have more money and they'd be willing to pay more. Okay. Mean, everyone good on that? Okay. All right, let's look. Let's finish off ELS. So we're going to go to cross price elasticity. And that measures the sensitivity of the demand, say, of hamburgers based on the change in the price of hamburger buns. Okay? So when you're looking at cross price elasticity, you're looking at how the change of one product affects the quantity demanded of the other. Here, positive and negative numbers are going to be important. Okay? Remember I said for supply and demand, it's absolute. Here, we're going to look at positive and negative numbers. Okay? It's going to, the only thing that you determine is if a good is a substitute or a complement. That's it. It can't tell you if it's inelastic and elastic. It can't tell you it's inferior or normal. It can tell you, is it a complement and a substitute?
Gavin, what's going to be on the top of the formula? And you're right. It's percent change in quantity of product B. over the percent change in price of product A. Now you might say, how do I know B and A? All you have to do is the quantity of one and the price of the other. And it doesn't matter which one. So if the price of hot dogs increases <clears throat> by 20% and the quantity of hamburgers increases, so let's just plug these numbers in. So I'm going to have 40%, right? But this is going to be B, quantity on top. I'm going to have 40% over 20 so the cross price elasticity then is going to be two. We all choose a positive or a negative number. Positive. Positive numbers are going to represent substitutes. And take a second to think about it, right? If price of one goes up and a substitute, if the price of hot dogs go up, the demand for hamburgers increase. So substitutes go in the same direction. So they're going to be a positive number. There's going to be a substitute. Okay. Now, Let's do hot dogs and hot dog buns. So for hot dog buns, I've got a decrease. So I've got a minus 40% on top. I still got the 20% here. Now I have a negative two. Hot dogs and hot dog buns, those are complements. So negative numbers are complements. So we got a positive number here, a substitute, the negative number, a complement. And I, I'm, you know, I'll put this down for some reason. If the coefficient is positive, then the goods are substitutes. And if the coefficient is negative, they are complements. You're allowed to use your calculators, but I would say on the quiz or test, and this is not. This is not on tomorrow's. You're going to be like numbers like this, you know, 20 over 40 or 40 over 20. So they'll be easy numbers. But the key is to just remember cross price, the only thing you could determine is complements and substitutes. This is only chapter four, right? Correct. This is not on the quiz. You know, if you want to put chapter five on your outline, this is all chapter five. Okay. All right, I'll give you a minute. Did I put a space for you to answer these things, anyone? Is, is there space on the back? Okay, there's some lines. All right, answer, answer these two. The price of inkjet printers increased by 20. Uh, you know how to read. I'll give you these two. Yeah. 
first the Jew get all the good things, right? Yes. Another minute. Ryan, did you get the first one? I think so. Okay. All right. So, what number is on top, Ryan? Uh, I'm saying 25. What, what quantity? Quantity demanded decreased by what? 50. Quantity demands on top, right? On all of them. Yes. Okay. That's that's, 50. So that's negative 50. That's negative. And what's the price? Uh, 25. So you got negative two. Okay. It will be a compliment. It'll be a compliment, right? So you would have got correct anyhow the complement part, right? Okay. Any any questions on that? Dad, did you get to the, the second one? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what's on top? Um, okay. So it's positive 10, right? Yeah. And on the bottom? Positive, right? Yeah. So that's 0. 0.25. Yeah. And it's what type of good? Substitute. Okay. We're all good? Barack, yeah? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yes, sir. Oh, for our answers, we do the fractions or decimals. It doesn't matter which one. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. All right, here we go. We come on that symphony line. Yeah, buddy. What two different types of income do we know? It could be one or two things. We know this. Passive and active. Like the um, law of income is more about the purchasing power. Okay, that, that, that's true. It wasn't like I'm looking. If, if income goes up, so before you tell what? Normal and inferior. Normal and inferior. Normal and inferior. Okay, that's what income elasticity is good tell us. Is it a normal good or is it an inferior good? Okay. What's going to be on top? Percentage change in quantity. It's on top of all. What do you think is going to be on the bottom? What are we measuring? Income. So instead of price here, you could have income. Okay. So every formula has quantity on top. We're measuring the change, how much quantity is changing based on either change of the price of the product or income. Barack, you bring your A game today? Barack, do you have a nap bring your A game? I have a light. You never bring your peak game, right? Yeah. All right, Barack. Income increases by 20%. Quantity decreases by 15. What type of good is it? 
think it'd be inferior. And inferior, right? Because it comes up in quantity is down, right? So that's an inferior good. Okay. So if the coefficient is positive, then it's a normal good. If the coefficient's negative, it's an inferior. Mason, just tell me when you're ready. Right. Mason, can this tell me, is there a substitute or a complement? No. no. Okay? It cannot. It only can tell you is it normal and inferior. All right? So what do we got? We got demand and supply. They can tell you is it inelastic or elastic. We've got cross price, substitute or complement. Now we got to think of is it positive or negative? We got income, normal or inferior. And by the way, notice that Barack was able to tell me it was an inferior good without even plugging in the formula. You know, if one's positive and the other's negative, you know it's going to be a negative coefficient. You don't even really got to plug in the formula there. Okay? Stephen, if income falls 10% and quantity falls, 20%, what type of good? Huh? Normal, Normal right? Because two negatives there would be a positive. Okay, quick minute. Give you a minute to look at this. See what we got. If the income elasticity of demand for good X is negative and the cross price elasticity for demand for good X, it could, oh my freaking Lord. All right, here we go. One minute. Who's got A as an alpha? B as in broccoli. B as in Carolina. D as in dogwood. A lot of dogwoods. E as in Ellen. All right. If X is negative, um, income is negative, what type of good? Fine. Income is negative. Yeah. So A and B are gone. Oh. Okay. Well, I just said negative, negative could be a positive. No, no, because they're separate things. They're separate things. Okay. All right. Following a decrease in the supply of oranges, the price of orange juice increased by 20%, which resulted in a 10% increase in the quantity of apple juice consumed. This implies that the cross price elasticity of demand between orange juice and apple juice is, give you a minute.
Logan, on one to 10, 10 being I absolutely got this right. One, it, I have no freaking idea what this question is. How would you rate your answer? 10. Charlie? Yeah. Red? Uh, Felix? 11. 11? <laughs> Holy freaking cat. Yeah. All right. Thomas? Go with 12, Thomas. Up on one. Come on. If Felix is 11. All right. Felix, what do we got? You'd feel really bad if this is like a yeah. thing. There you go. All right. Any questions on that? Good job. It's cross price elasticity. Oh, Jesus. All right. If the cross price elasticity coefficient of goods A and B is negative five and the income elasticity of good A is two, which of the following is true? Line one to ten. Uh, like a seven point nine. Okay, Sisto. Griff. Five. Nick. Five. Okay. All right, Nick. If the cross price coefficient of goods A and B is negative five, what type of good is it? So negative five. Right. So compliments. All right. So A and B are compliments, right? Right. Does that knock any answers out? Yes. It knocks C out, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And if the income elasticity of good A is two, what type of good is good A? Normal. Normal. Okay. Is there anything about inferior goods then? Yes. Yeah. Which ones? Because we got we got the C out, right? D? Okay. All right. A decrease in the price of good A will decrease the demand. Will that happen? No, because that'd be a positive, all right? An increase in income. Will decrease. That doesn't seem like that would happen, right? Do we do we what we call it a normal good, right? Yeah. An increase in the price of A will decrease. So let's say that complements an increase in the price of hot dogs. Is that going to buy more or less hot dogs, Nick? What? So what would happen to the demand for hot dog buns? Now don't even. Don't even look at your notes. Just think, if there's an increase in the price of hot dogs, you're going to buy less hot dogs, right? right. Do you need more or less hot dog buns? Right. So the demand for buns would go down, right? So an increase in the price of A will decrease the demand for B. All right. Now also, Hubbard, the guys who are unsure, did you know that a negative number was a compliment? Okay. This is going to be positive, right? Increase, decrease is going to be negative. So you know that's going to be a negative coefficient. It's going to be a compliment. Okay. All right. Any questions on anything we did today? All right. Fill out your sheets, put them in the box, and have a great day.
Hope to see you either tonight or tomorrow for the review. 745, either way, I'll send out the link. Tomorrow, 100.